Hey guys, it's Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome and thank you for finding us. I hope this video finds you well. Huge shout out to our patrons. They are amazing and they do so much for this channel. Uh, what are we talking about today? It is Samurai Wolf. This is a set from Eureka Entertainment, two classic Japanese films directed by Hideo Gosha that came out in the mid-1960s, I think 1966 and 1967. They're short films. The first one is 74 minutes. The second one is 72 minutes. I only watched the first film, but I'm going to try a new format today. I did an extensive review of the first film on Letterboxd. I will put the link to my Letterboxd in the description of this video so you can go and see that. What I wanted to do here is give kind of like a mini review, like basic impressions of this film, a really quick overview of it. And then I want to play a scene from this movie that I think does a really good job of encapsulating um, the kind of what is really interesting about this film. So at the end of this video, there's going to be a, like a 45 second to a minute long clip from this film. So you can kind of check out the vibe of it. But so um, the, the, the plot of Samurai Wolf 1 is not anything that will be unfamiliar to you if you've seen like Yojimbo, Zatoichi, like any of those kind of films that are poking fun at the chambara genre, the, you know, like the sword fighting, Japanese sword fighting films, you call them samurai films, whatever you want to call them. There's this kind of rogue samurai guy who rolls into this tiny village and there's like good people there who are being exploited by bad people and he ends up, you know, feeling bad for the good people. It's very, it's like the plot of every single Zatoichi movie, right? What makes this movie really interesting is that Hideo Gosha is formally very restless and experimental. People have, have said to me like they love his style. I've only seen four Hideo Gosha films, which is also worth pointing out. I've seen this one, Sword of the Beast, Violent Streets and one other of his Yakuza films. And um, and so I'm not by no means an expert on, on, on him as a filmmaker. But what I find interesting is that people say they love his style. But to me, he doesn't have a definitive style based on those four films. They're all very different films. To me, what makes him interesting is that he's formally very restless. Like he tries different things every time he makes a movie and even within the movie within different sequences he tries all these different things like there's really jarring edits in this film there's like a very weird sense of space and time where like you don't really know how much time is passing between scenes or where scenes are taking place in relationship to other scenes he doesn't use traditional things like establishing shots and like traditional kind of pacing within scenes there's like very strange pacing where some scenes are like ah and some scenes are very measured and more traditional and like it seems like in every scene, he he wants to do something different and try something new and challenge the form of cinema. And it has this very kind of meta thing where it almost reminded me of like a of like a new wave film, like French new wave. And then, you know, there was the Japanese new wave too in films like, um, uh, like Double Suicide, which is a fucking incredible movie, which you should go and see immediately if you haven't seen it. Or like, um, th what is that book called? Or that movie called Throw Your, Throw Out Your Books, Throw Out Your Books and like, parade in the streets or something like that like that kind of like that this formal restlessness where it's like the the movie itself is acutely aware of the fact that it is a movie and it is also kind of constantly toying and playing with the language of cinema to try to find something different and new and a different way of telling a story in the same way that like if you've seen violent streets there's this very kind of meta thing in that movie about like celebrity and the power of cinema and television as a medium to make people to change their behavior, their perceptions of one another, like that kind of stuff. And almost like this Guy Debord thing of like, you know, social relationships mediated by the spectacle of capitalism and the media state and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very interesting film where like you have a pretty straight ahead samurai story and there's a lot of violence in this movie and there's a lot of blood. It's a very bloody, like old school black and white Japanese, you know, samurai movie. Um, Heavily influenced by spaghetti westerns, obviously, like heavy, heavy spaghetti western influence on this movie, which is obviously really fascinating because the spaghetti westerns were heavily influenced by Japanese films and like, you know, like Kurosawa, that generation and, and the Kurosawa generation was heavily influenced by American westerns. So you have such an incredible and fascinating dialogue, I think, between westerns. Japanese films, back to Westerns, back to Japanese. It was so interesting the way that that dialogue ping-ponged around multiple generations, multiple continents. I, it's really cool to think about. Um, but so, yeah, it's just I just think if, if you're into, like, the form of cinema, if you like movies that are, are not trying to be the same thing every single time, if you like a movie that kind of plays with, you know, different ways of framing shots, different ways of using editing techniques, like, just not 
trying to belabor the same thing over and over again, you know, until the end of time. I think you'll really dig this movie. Um, you could call it style if you want. If you, I, I, Like I said, I, to me, it's more that he has a sense of restlessness where he never wants to settle into something. Whereas when I think of style, I think of someone who has a distinct style where when you see a film of theirs, you're like, oh yes, that is a film that was made by such and such person because like David Fincher is a great example. Like David Fincher has a style. And he has style in his films. They're stylish, they're, but they also have his unique style. Um, and uh, it's uh, – this is more of like – I feel like he's very, very experimental and curious about challenging what this movie can be. Um, and so it's it's very interesting. And so it's Eureka Entertainment. It's Samurai Wolf 1 and 2. I was just talking about the first film just to remind you. Uh, yeah, highly recommend it if you're a big fan of Japanese cinema or just like experimental films and that kind of stuff. Not like full-on abstract experimental, but you like new wave type of films. So my name is Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Don't turn off because we're going to play you a clip from the movie right now. Nandayo. <sighs> Ha, ha, ha.